We welcome in Julianne Laurent to the show, one of the happiest men in London, I imagine, at the moment. <laughs> Jules, uh, you must have thoroughly enjoyed that because there were so many questions about France going into this clash. And they answered a lot of them over that 90 minutes, didn't they? Yeah, you're right. There was loads of pressure on, on Deschamps, on the players, on the key players in that team, Griezmann, Pogba, and even Mbappé himself, you know, despite being so young. And, and I think they answered a lot of, the question, of, the, of those questions. I think the boys are right. Argentina were not very good. They were not very good earlier in the tournament. They were not very good today either. But still, I think you have to, to praise France for the way they played, for the, the, the plan they, they got and worked. You know, Matuidi on the left hand side did well for, for this team. Mbappe, obviously, at 19 years of age, is just incredible. And, you know, no bragging here, but on this show, we were the first one to say to the whole world, listen, there's this kid coming through. Mm. He's going to be amazing. And we were the first one to say, and it's one thing to do it for Monaco first, and it's one thing to do it for PSG with more pressure and more expectation. It's another thing to do it on the biggest stage of all against, you know, some of the top players in the world in a game like that in the knockout stage of the World Cup. And it's just incredible, and there's no limit for him. Yeah, Jules, did you think France were going to get knocked out? Is that why you're back in London? Because you been in London, we had, we had Rafa going to the wrong game with Germany. What's, what's wrong with these journalists? Raf's, 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 Raf's over Raph's there. Watching Brazil. Raf's over there. He's, he can't get him out of the room. I have to lock him up uh, because Germany are out. We've got Jules coming back to London. We've got Marcotti. I don't know where Marcotti is. <laughs> he's following Sam. Actually, they're not even there. Who's he following? He's following Sam Pauli back on. Jules but, brings it up. Like when we used to watch Champions League together, when Mbappe had that incredible run with Monaco. You knew. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think a lot, I mean, yeah, I get it. I think a lot of people knew about knew about it. Yes. No, no, but, no, but, no but, only us. But, <laughs> yes. but, but you know, we, did, we talked about. He's not a star, he's not a star today. He's been a, he's been a star for yeah. a while. Mm -hmm. But I mean, a World Cup like James Rodriguez did in 2014 can really announce yourself. Uh, but I don't think it's any surprise. What gets me is not his skill level or his pace, it's his confidence. I've never seen. Well, I've really seen uh, such a confident teenager, and that. That's one of the biggest assets you can have because when a player loses confidence, no matter how talented, it's tough to get back. Mm. But he is super, super confident. A, a confident teenager without being arrogant in the way that well, he plays. Well, it looks plays. that way, yeah. Yeah, and that, that in itself, I think, is something because we could say, well, a teenager would never name I was a teenager, but you, you could tell that the guy was going to be a pain in the backside. Yeah. Where you look at Mbappe, you're like, look, there's still even more space for him to get better. And you see him performing today... And Macherano, he could still be running alongside Mbappe, and there's no chance he's catching. And nobody in Argentina was ever going to catch him because he's got something that none of those guys ever has, and that's athleticism and speed. And then, oh, by the way, he puts that together with skill and ability to finish a play. It's just a total package. How high is his ceiling? Well, he's, I said, yes, he's going to be the next superstar, isn't he? Cristiano's 33. I think Leo's in his 30s, isn't he? Early 30s. Forget Neymar. He's, he's, the, he's the superstar of, of the future, isn't he? And the fact that... You, it's just so easy to talk platitudes about him, but you, you, a 19-year-old, you know, a 19-year-old, it's exceptional what he's doing at this moment in time. Uruguay through to the quarterfinals then with a 2-1 victory over Portugal. Deserved winners? I think so, just uh, pretty even. I mean, the Portugal were a lot of uh, pressure in the second half, but I think the big difference was, there was for most of the game, a two-pronged attack from Uruguay and just really Ronaldo up front. Never, didn't really have anybody assisting him. Almost all the tournament, they, they tried different formations, different personnel. But Uruguay, just too strong, particularly in that department. A tough team to play, Uruguay. Yes, they are, yeah. And we knew that as soon as they got the second goal, it was a nice goal by Cavani, that they were more than happy just to defend the rest of the game out, wasn't they? Defensively, they're very strong. We know how, how well Marshall they are at the back. And um, they just weren't good enough in the final mm. third, Portugal. They just didn't have that cutting edge to, to get through them. Cavani was the cutting edge for Europe. How good was that second goal? Yeah, the whole build-up was great. Uh, you, you think of how Uruguay was able to score. It was basically on counter-attack, switching the field on the first one. Uh, <laughs> I really haven't seen a goal come off someone's face before, but <laughs> when you just have to put it at they the all end of something right on a laser, because <laughs> that was quite a ball in. Oh, I'm sure I did, <laughs> of course. Um, but if you look at the way Uruguay played, I, I think... You know, they had to come up with something else. They, they weren't able to, to really break down as far as crosses into the penalty area. Jimenez and Godin were excellent. 
and um, just weren't able to come up with the answers, and Uruguay was. They just know who they are, Uruguay, and they're fine with it. They accept it. There's nothing about them that, that feels uncomfortable. We Look, we're just going to defend here because we know we're good at this, and we know that we have two guys up there that can resolve the game for us. And in the end, essentially, that was the case. We defended well. We allowed Cavani to score the goals. 2-1. See you guys later. See you, Ronaldo. Enjoy the offseason. The only disappointing part, sorry, is that it looks as if Cavani's yeah. injured yeah. and might miss the rest of the tournament, which would be sad for, for well, personally for him, of course, but particularly for Uruguay because, you know, as, as Ali rightly said, they, de- they depend on those two up front so much, don't they? And, you know, when they look to the bench, they haven't got the quality no. of a Cavani or a Suarez to turn to. Well, next up for Uruguay, then, is France. We'll be talking about France's victory over Argentina on ESPN FC, which is available later today exclusively on ESPN+. Plus. It's not long now until Brazil take on Mexico. That, of course, is on Monday morning. Brazil 9-2-1 to go through. Mexico 3-1 outsiders. For more, let's catch up with Seven Herd. Gentlemen, greetings from Samara, where Mexico will play Brazil in the round of 16 in two days' time. Herc, on our flight in this morning, one thing that was very noticeable and very different from every other flight we've been on so far in this tournament is that it was not a majority Mexico fans. We saw a lot of Brazil jerseys. There are a lot of Brazil jerseys, not only in the plane ride, but at the airport and here in Samara. We saw we were just at the restaurant. There were a few Brazil fans, obviously still outnumbered by the Mexican fans there, but they were loud, they were boisterous, and they were heard. Could be the uh, first time in this tournament that Mexico is not effectively playing as the home team. See if that plays a role on Monday. What we do know will play a role on Monday is the heat, very similar to Rostov. Now, on game day in Rostov, the clouds came out and cooled things off a little bit. The temperature at kickoff for Mexico and Brazil is expected to be 95 degrees. You thought it would be a disadvantage for the Mexicans against South Korea. You think the same against the Brazilians? Uh, yeah, yeah. I still think it's a disadvantage for the Mexican team. The, they have 15-plus players that are playing outside of Mexico, not used to these extreme temperatures. I'm not used to it. It's 90 degrees, and I'm in a suit <laughs> right now. It's going to be a very difficult game for the Mexican players chasing the likes of Neymar, Coutinho, Paulinho, Marcel, Marcelo, if he gets to play. Listen, it's not going to be easy. It's an easy task, and the conditions on the field of the weather is just going to add to it. We know Juan Carlos Osorio is a guy who likes to rely on science. Could the Heat play a role in his decisions on who starts and who doesn't, given the fact that he's used pretty much the same team in the three group phase games? He's asked a lot of those guys. I don't think so much the Heat, but definitely because he's used so many players in the same I mean, first game, second game, third game, the same players played, essentially. One, one or two changes. Uh, so you're going to see a lot of player turnover, I suspect. You may see... Layun drop back into the fullback position. You may see Jonah Dos Santos, who I think will be vital in this game, coming into central midfield. Maybe for Andres Guardado, who had a had a surgery done, a procedure done right before the World Cup. And let's face it, you don't have a procedure done on your knee before the World Cup if it's not absolutely necessary. I don't think he's fit. Yesterday we talked about how this match will define the legacy of Mexico's so-called golden generation. Well, today an interview came out with Juan Carlos Osorio, and he acknowledged this will define whether he stays with Mexico or not. This specific result, you agree? And should it? Absolutely. Absolutely. He has one of the highest win percentages ever for Mexico, but that's not good enough because you still have the 7-0 Chile game. You have the 4-1 Confederations Cup game. You have the 2-1 Jamaica game, and then you have that 3-0 thrumping at the hands of Sweden. It's all or nothing for Juan Carlos Osorio. That's the latest from here in Samara. For Hercules Gomez, I'm Sebastian Salazar. Guys, we send it back to you. Thank you very much. And if you want more from the boys, and let's face it, who wouldn't? You can download their daily podcast, Two on Three, over at the website. Welcome, guys, into our ESPN FC Facebook Live. Fresh off that thrilling match between France and Argentina. Seven goals. Shaka Hislop is here with me to look back at it. Plus, he'll be taking some of your questions. So, guys, send them in because we know there's plenty of questions surrounding a certain Argentina. But we're going to get to them yeah. in a bit. Shaka, so the big question. France now into the quarterfinals, getting to the business end of the World Cup, even though it always is big business yeah. at the World Cup. But we've been criticizing them, waiting, you know, will the real France stand up? Will we finally see the France that everyone had as favorites to win the World Cup? So with this performance today, can we say we have seen that France? We have seen shades of it. Uh, I'm still a bit reluctant to say this is France at the absolute best. This is France that we all expected coming to this tournament. 
uh, I, will, I, I will point out quite clearly, Kylian Mbappe rising to the occasion and continuing to do so. It just seems no stopping him, um, or almost literally at times. Uh, Angolo Kante continues to, to amaze. He's uh, everywhere. He is everywhere. And, and, not, and he's not just one of those players that's covering ground, putting in tackles, but his reading of the game, his passing, little things that, that, keep, that keep teams ticking. And if this France team is to, is to go deep, he will... I, I'm, again, it's hard for me to say Kante will be the un, unsung hero because I think more and more people are continue to recognize exactly how good he is and how important he is. I thought Pogba, Pogba had his best game of the tournament so far, but then Argentina kind of allowed him the freedom of the, uh, the midfield. Nobody had legs to stay with him. When he did decide to go and, and, and run through, through the middle of the park, we get to Argentina in a minute. I think Olivier Giroud continues to look more confident in his position and the fact that he is now the out-and-out -out number one as that center forward in that center forward position. So all the parts are starting to come together. Saying all that, you have to keep in mind who they're playing against. Yeah. This Argentina continue to disappoint. As good a team as they are in paper. But did you really expect them to be able to get it together, especially against this France team? I, I, you knew those problems were going to catch up to them. I did. Or maybe it's just wishful thinking. Because when we did our predictor earlier this week, I had Argentina beating France. Because I, I, I thought we'd not... Come again? Yeah, I, I, yeah that, that was <laughs> everybody else's response. And let me tell you why. We, <laughs> France had given us nothing to really, you know, hope for, yeah. that they were going to be good, or as good as we expect. Neither did Argentina. But you see the reaction post the Nigeria game, where you started to feel, all right, now this team is unified. After the meltdown against Croatia, and all the in dressing room squabbling and arguing and fighting and everything as I was, uh, had been reported, you saw a team that looked unified. Mm. Unified, okay, it was a, a, a late goal, it was an unlikely source, Rojo with his right foot of all things. But you saw miracles but, happen. But, <laughs> but and, 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 and sometimes, and how many times have we sat here at the end of big games or big tournaments where it's just something unlikely happens to a team that kind of brings them together and they respond. And now I just felt that the, you'd get the response. Yeah. I felt that this team now realized, listen, we have to rally around Lionel Messi. We have to support him however we, we can. We're not listening to Sam Pauli anymore, <laughs> right? He's got a ticket to come in and watch a game. That's about it. And then they come out against France, and it seemed as though nobody in Argentina, nobody, not just on this Argentina team, but nobody in the whole of Argentina knows that Mbappe is quick. <laughs> you have absolutely no game plan to play against his pace. You, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you allow the likes of, uh, of, of Paul Pogba to pick up the ball but what would you do? Maybe is it just that the players aren't good enough? Because you did in one of our hits just mention that they're they're quite old, the, and to run against yeah. a nineteen-year-old that's absolutely on fire. And, and, and no, and, and that's fine. But you can't leave Kylian Mbappe one on one. And and you you've got to you've got one has got to go to him. Somebody has has got to cover. Now Olivier Giroud is not going to run by you. So when the ball is is in France's half or or, or, or deep or whatever it may be. Have one midfielder go, one defender come around and, and, and cover. And play for that long push and, and double, double team him in, in, in that regard, right? Double team in, 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 in respect of him getting by one defender. Allow Olivier Giroud a little bit of space. You can go one-on-one -on -one with him because he's not going to beat, you know, either to Mendy or Rohu for pace or, or should. So that's how, that's how, that's how you, you play Kylian Mbappe. But everybody, and, and the amazing thing for me is, as I watch this Argentina team, um, and especially at, at 1-0, th this is just before the, the Di Maria goal, um, or, or before the, now I can't remember which one's the first goal. Was it Di Maria was the first mm. goal or, or the corner? No, Di Maria's the second. Di Maria, okay, so just before the first goal. I'm, I'm looking at, at Argentina and, and how they line up against France. And whenever they get up around the box, everybody comes flying past. Mm -hmm. Lionel Messi, top of the box or whatever he, he may be, 
But there's absolutely no reason for your wing backs to be going past Lionel Messi. There's absolutely no, no, no reason, to, uh, like um, as I mentioned, for any of your midfielders who are 30, 32, and 34 years old between them to be going past Lionel Messi. Because all of a sudden now it's bre it breaks down. You know, it's fine to do that if you've got the pace, but you don't. France have all the pace. Don't just be a little bit more disciplined. Sit 10 yards deeper. You don't have to go by him. I, 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 it's, I call it kamikaze defending. <laughs> Rojo and Otto, and this is another thing, and as critical as we are of, of, of both Ro, uh, Rojo and Otamendi for their respective clubs, they play for Manchester United and Manchester City respectively. Now, they aren't great for those clubs. Fine. But let's just, if we just do a club by club comparison to between Argentina and Australia, who conceded two against France, one of them being a, a deflected goal. It's, it's a no brainer. Yeah. You have the talent, you have the experience. Just put some kind of a plan in place for these two that they don't go galloping forward every time Argentina gets over the half line. Don't be reckless with, with what you do. Rojo should have been sent off in that penalty against Mbappe because as much as the, the ruling has changed about the triple punishment, the triple punishment doesn't come into play when there's a genuine attempt at the ball. Nobody can convince me that Rojo on, on Mbappe was a genuine attempt at the ball. It was a genuine attempt to stop Mbappe. So as the law, as the law is, is currently written, that should have been a red card. Mm -hmm. Yet he gets away with that. Yet he continues to be as reckless as, as, as ever and, and could have seen a, a further card. Had to be taken off at, at halftime just in case because he's such a loose cannon. Otto Mendy keeps getting himself in trouble. Um, Mascherano picked up one booking. He could have been sent off. It's the lack of discipline in this argument, the, the lack of not just discipline, but awareness by players who should know better is the most amazing thing for me this Argentina. I just want to say San Paoli out and Shaka Hislop in. No, I, I don't want I that know. <laughs> You don't want that job, but we do yeah. have a job for you because mm. we see all of your guys' questions coming in. Shaka, of course, you can imagine that a lot of them have to do with Argentina, yeah. and rightfully so. Um, Brandon Clemens wants to know, does Messi retire again? Kate is asking why Aguero was brought off the bench. And Eric is saying, no strikers starting for Argentina. Which one do you want to tackle first? Let's start uh, with Messi because it is all about Messi. This is the last time we're seeing him in an Argentina shirt, do you think? I, I think so. And, and you saw the reaction yes. post uh, the Copa America uh, defeat in the final to, to Chile team that they beat in the group stages. Uh, and, and you can understand. Now, this, not just this team is in disarray. And it's not just about the 11 or Sao Paulo or whoever may take over. All the way to the very top of the Argentinian Football Association, it's an absolute shambles. And when you're a player, not just of Lionel, Ma Lionel Messi's talent, but used to things being done a certain way, a certain sense of professionalism. When you play at clubs that like, like Barcelona, everybody from the guy or lady who's cutting the grass to the guy or lady serving, serving the post-training meals, there's a sense of professionalism and a sense of pride that goes into every single job. Yet you look at Argentina, and now, admittedly, I'm looking in from the outside. You don't get that feeling about anything in Argent Argentinian national team setup. And as a result... It's a hot mess. It's you, been a hot mess. And so just out of uh, prof professional pride, you, you want to step down. There's not so much about the defeats or the man of the defeats or when they happened or the three finals in, in, in a row, but just a certain amount of pride in what you do from day to day. And if, if everybody else, if, if, if nobody else can live up to my expectation or what I'm doing or my example, step eventually out. you just step away. And so yes, I, I, think, I think yes, for those reasons. What about the Aguero questions? A lot of people are wondering why was he brought off I don't ben, know. Should he, especially in a game like this where you already know your backs are kind of against the wall, just they have been, you know, even before the World Cup started, I say, what would you have done differently if you were Sao Paulo in terms of your lineup? Look, I, I, I would have started Aguero at the very least. I like Lionel Messi playing a lot deeper and getting on the ball, right? Maybe he wouldn't have found, he wouldn't have found the space. I, I, I really don't know what, what he's thinking be behind playing Lionel Messi as, as a force nine. How, how is he supposed to get on the ball? I understand that when he does get on the ball, he's in more dangerous areas. Fine. But the issue still becomes getting him on the ball. Mm. We've spoken about their midfielders. 
You have Pavon and, and Di Maria playing out wide, who couldn't miss a f the first man with a cross if, if, <laughs> if, you, if the first man decided to lie down. I mean, those two in wide areas, again, bemusing, given the, given the talent that we know they're capable of. But when they do miss the first man, they put the ball straight into the hand of, of Hugo Lloris. And then, oh, but, but then you see the talent on show where Di Maria just pops up 30 yards yeah. out and, and strokes one into the top corner. And, and amazing. Yet still, he can't put in a decent cross. <laughs> so, but but, but to, the, to, to my point, why, why you play Lionel Messi there? I, I, again, the thinking, I can only assume the thinking is that when he gets on the ball, he's in more dangerous areas. But he's not getting on the ball. And, and that, the only time he did, uh, with any effect, is when Aguero did come on. And he was able to drop a little bit deeper. So the thing for me is, f with, with Argentina, you know you, you're top heavy in that you, you're striker heavy and you've, that, that's, where, that's where you are. That's where you're going to win and lose games, up there. Just, give your de just tell your defense, don't do anything stupid. Give them a game plan. Stick to it. You all don't even have to come past the half line, as far as I'm concerned. Leave that to those guys. We have arguably the best strike force in world football at our disposal. This strike force is so good. Serie A's leading goal scorer is at home on a beach somewhere. Icardi didn't even make the squad. Mm -hmm. That's how good they are up front. So tell your defense, this is what we're going to do. This is how you're going to play Mbappe. This is what, okay, um, Javier Mascherano, this is what you're going to do with Paul Pogba. You don't go past this line here. Leave it to those guys. But no, everybody goes maraud and forward, and this is what happens. But Icardi is actually um, in the Maldives. Oh, is he? Yes, he has been posting quite a few photos <laughs> on Instagram. So he's clearly, don't cry for me, Argentina. Anyways, let's go to this one because it's so funny because this is one of the questions I was asking. We saw our good friend Craig Burley questioning what on earth did Dybala do to Sam Pauli or Lionel Messi yes. that it's like he was just under I, you, I, Shaka. I, how do you explain that situation? I can't. I can't. I, I really can't. Just over 20 minutes, we <laughs> came on with the 60th minute against, against Croatia, and, and that's it, as, as far as wor a work of appearances go. Exactly. I, 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 I can't explain it. I, I really can't. I, I don't know. I, I, can't, I couldn't even hazard a guess. It, it, it's, and, and, and still, when you, you, when you had a World Cup, could have, but we don't, we don't know at this we point. Yeah. We don't know at this point. When you go to a World Cup, this stage of the competition, this stage of international football, and Iguain, who's fluffed his every single line he's had at this level so far, is given more of an opportunity than Dybala. I, I'm not sure who can answer that question by San Paulo. All right, well, we've actually hit 13 minutes, and this is supposed to be 10 minutes, and we didn't even get to go in-depth on France, I'm but trust I'm me. I'm ranting here. Shaka is ranting about Argentina. There's loads more to get to, so make sure you catch our show, ESPN FC. But Shaka, before we close, um, a certain Chris Rag has a question. He just wants to know, um, Messi or Ronaldo, Shaka? <laughs> Listen, Chris, don't you start. <laughs> don't start this debate, Don't guys. you start. Don't start. Well, Messi, um, as of now, is probably already packing his bags. And, and it is unfortunate. He's Pretty heading out. He's going to join the car. Party out there now. If it's someone that needs a vacation, I hope they at least put Messi on a private jet and everybody else can fly economy back home. Well done, Argentina. France, by the way. I've been rambling about Argentina. Well done, France. Well done, France, Shaka Hislop says. All right, so France through to the quarterfinals. Thank you guys so much for all of your questions. We'll be doing a couple more Facebook Lives. Hopefully get Shaka back so he can rant about somebody and something else. <laughs> but in the meantime, make sure to catch ESPN FC. Our show is on later on ESPN Plus, and we'll be looking back at everything from the World Cup action today.